Welcome to Inside the 87s, your home for updates of one of the top junior hockey programs in the EHL. Located in the hockey hotbed of New Jersey, where hockey players are molded for the next level, the 87 way. Hello and welcome to another special edition of Inside the 87s. My name is Anthony DiPaolo and today we are joined by EHL forward Kay Yasuda. Kay, thank you for joining us today. No problem. Thank you for doing this. Now, Kay, you are the leading goal scorer for not just the 87s, but for the entire EHL. You have 38 points in just 21 games this season. And uh, we'll get to that in just a moment. But, you know, first things first, how's your holiday going so far? It's been good. Uh, I'm at my Bellet family house. Uh, you know, I haven't skated for like two weeks now, but you know, it's, it's nice to get a break sometimes and I'm so ready to get back on the ice like next week. Yep. The team will be heading back onto the ice on January 11th. So it, it'll be good to shake off some rust yep. for the, the week leading up to it. And Kay, you know, since you're leading the league in scoring, you're one of the more prolific players. The EHL beat writer, Kyle McKenna had an interesting piece earlier this season about your road to the e-show you came to north america in 2012 from japan and since then you know, you've played at some academies some uh different teams across you know the ehl and the ncdc yep. so do you want to talk uh, just a little bit about your development over these last eight years uh you know coming to the u.s was uh was probably the biggest decision i ever made in my life and, you know, I had some tough times during my challenge. Uh, I didn't know any English, first of all. Like, it, well, that was tough. And so I couldn't understand any words when I came here, like, the first time. Like, I didn't know what coach was saying to me, my friends, like, my teachers, anything. Like, I didn't know. And my whole family's back in Japan still. So, like, you know, I was homesick. But, you know, right now, like, I, and I can tell that it was worth it. Like, I have no regret, like, making that decision. I'm so glad I came here, and I, I, I'm so glad everything worked out, yeah. Now, you were telling me before that your billet family is from the same town as your family's hometown. Yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah. It's, it's so nice because, you know, I get to speak Japanese. I mean, they speak English, too, but I get to speak Japanese when I'm here. Like, I feel home, like... I can talk about like the stuff I know back home and uh, they make me like Japanese food and stuff. It, it's it like, it's like home for me in the U S I guess. It's like, it's really nice to spend time with them. And, and speaking of your hometown, you had also played, and I want to bring this up because right now up in Canada, the world junior championships is going on. You were also able to represent uh, team Japan in the world juniors do you want to talk about your experiences there playing on an international stage yeah sure uh obviously it's always honored to play for my country like it's it's really cool like i get to play against like the best players from the world like like a play like i can't ask any better environment than that like the competitive level is really high and uh it's just playing for my country is just always special like it's different than playing for my school or playing in the EHL. It's just, it's just, you know, it's, there's just something that's different. And yeah. I mean, a lot, a lot of fans, um, I'm, I'm sure you know, it's, it's more always professional. Happened. Like you get free stuff from Nike. I mean, Team Japan, uh, Nike is the official sponsor. Uh, so we always get like stuff from Nike every year and we get like our helmets and, you know, equipment, everything. And we get treated like a pro, like they'll get us like every meal and like even like snacks and like during the game, like, like, like they'll give us the, everything that we need. So like, it's just, the, like, it's just really nice. Yeah. How, how about some of your teammates? Yeah. Uh, I think I've joked with you about this before, getting some, some of the guys from you know your team over to the 87s, maybe, maybe some more recruiting from the, uh, Japan junior hockey team. Yeah. I mean, people might think that, you know, Japan's not that good at hockey, but like we actually have like really good players. Like 
especially like I get to play with Aito Iguchi. He's really famous. He's really skilled kid. I think everyone watched him like at least once on YouTube. For for yeah, for additional context, uh, Aito uh, Aito Iguchi is actually featured on a uh, popular hockey YouTuber Pavel Barber. So uh, Iguchi has gained some uh, national or even international acclaim. Mm-hmm. And uh, Kay, you want to talk about playing alongside him? That must be really exciting. He was actually my line mate. I was a center. He was my wing. And he is probably the best player I ever play with. Like, he is that good. Like, a lot of people say that he's scaled, but he's too small to play at higher level. But, like, it doesn't even bother him. Like, he's that good. Like, the size doesn't matter to him, I guess. Like, like I was – like, it's just so fun to watch him play. Like, like I, like I'm playing with him. Like, he always, like, makes, like, sick moves. And, like, it's so cool. Like, and he made – he always gave me a good pass. I mean, if I, if I make it past him, like, he'll always score. So, like, it's always fun playing with him. That, that, that must be really exciting. You know, not just, you know, playing internationally, but – playing alongside someone as skilled as a Gucci. Yeah, it's really fun. Now, okay, it might not be Team Japan, but the 87s have had a very strong start to the season going 18-1-2. and two. Yep. Do you want to talk about that strong first half of the season? Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I have no doubt. First of all, like, I have no doubt in this team that like we, will, we can be any team in this league right now. Like, we are that good. Uh, you know, as a team, like we have a lot of returners and who knows what to do. And the new guys had, you know, they struggled at the beginning of the season. Uh, but now like they they know what they're capable of doing. So like we have a chemistry there and obviously coach Hooley and coach Maddie, like they know what to do too. So like as a team, I think we're in a, in a good, like a good spot that we can, we have a good chance to win the championship this year. Now, one thing I do want to talk to you about is your chemistry with Nick Swain and Tim DeBoer. Those are your, those have been your two line mates throughout most of this season. Yeah. And I just want to say as a broadcaster, that makes my job fun because seeing you three play together, you guys always know where uh where each other are located on the ice. I mean, seeing you and Swain just ripping cross ice passes to each other setting yep. up each other for goals. It's again, it's just so fun to see. Yep. So t- talk a little bit about the chemistry and what makes this trio so good. The, the reason we are having a great season so far is that uh, we communicate like a lot of times, like, uh, like many, like a lot. And like every time you're on the, like on the ice, like you always talk to each other. And when we, get back to the bench after every shift. Like we always talk about the shift we just had, uh, talk about the options we had. Like we, like, it's that like, you know, like say like we talk about this one play that we had, like we talk about like the other options that we had and maybe like next time we could do this, we could do that. And like, it's just obviously like the communication is really key for us. And I mean, as a center, like my job is to control the game. And those two guys, like they know what their job is. And they're so good at doing at, at doing their job. Like Tim DeBoer, like he's such a hard worker. Like he always skate hard. And you know, like he always for check for us for our line. He'll get the puck. He'll he'll pass me the puck. And my job is, is to find Swain. And if I find Swain in an open spot, like like he'll score like most of the time like you've seen it like many times this season like and yeah that's I guess that's why we're having great season so far yeah yeah he Swain definitely has a really good shot I know you set him up a couple of times yeah he like yeah every time I pass him like 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 I know that he'll score like that's why I pass him obviously and he's like in a good spot like where like he's like not too close from from like their d and like he's always find a good spot to shoot and and every time I hit him and he will just score so it makes my job a lot easier honestly earlier you were talking about some of the new guys coming in mm-hmm. now you played 16 games for the 87s last season after coming over from the NCDC 
But 16 games, I think you got a good idea of what the team was like. How does this year's team differ from last season's team? Uh, I think that we are better than last year as a team. Uh, just uh, the thing is that, you know, the last year we didn't really have, like we are talking about like doing the like, job like individually, like that's really important. And last year, like sometimes we are kind of selfish at some point during the game which like cause the problems but this year like everyone knows their job like like first two lines like obviously our job to score like my line and Taramani's line like our job to score and uh the reason we are so successful this year is I think the bottom two lines like they they grind every single game which makes my job not my job our job easier uh so like I can't think those like bottom two lines for working hard every game like it's like I would hate playing against them like if I was on that other team like I would not want to be playing against like Joe Garcia or like Francis Kenzel like they're like so hard worker like it's like it's incredible yeah I mean even even some of the other like newer guys like Ben Gibbons yeah. Jason Atkinson yeah. Everett Schneider they're such a hard worker and I, I have so much respect for them and like and you know and when they do their job, like, we got to do our job, too. Like, first two line, we got to put some points. Like, coach always talks about it. Like, we got to do, like, our job. Like, Now, you guys had ended on a pretty good note with a mm-hmm. 4-1 win over the Little Flyers. Yeah. And usually you're the playmaker, Kay, but in that game, you're able to score twice. Yeah. I mean, So yeah. h- how good was it to end the 2020 portion of the season on that kind of note? I mean, as a team – uh we lost Abukor that week, I think. And, uh, like, we had to send a league that, you know, it, it gave, like, all the team a hope that, you know, everyone can beat them and beat us. And which, like, it's not, it's not good for us. Like, we had to send a message to the league, to everyone, that, like, we are the best team in the league. And, like, we can't give any hope to those teams like they have a chance to beat us like and against the little flyers it was you know they're on fire like last 10 games they were seven and three like uh it was you know playing against them like and dominating dominating the little flyers like i think showed everyone in the league that you know we are the best team in the league and as a as a like, you know individually like uh i didn't score that many goals like past 10 games I I think I only had like two goals which like frustrated me like really a lot like and I just that game like before the game I told Tim and Swain that I want to score and you know of course they sent me up so I can't thank them enough for that and you know scoring two goals and going to the break it's 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 really yeah it feels good now to start off the second half you're going up against Apple Corps again. That's the game on January 11th. Yep. And even though Apple Corps is at the bottom of the mid Atlantic conference, uh, j- just for uh, transparency, like this is take two of our interview. So before yep. Kay was bringing up how sneaky good uh, yeah. Apple Corps can be. So Kay, do you want to talk a little bit about, you know, what makes Apple Corps a deceptively dangerous team? I mean, I think that uh, I don't think they have, you know, the best players in the league, but everyone on the, on their team, like works really hard. Like they always finish a hit. They're always grinding. And, you know, it's hard to play against those teams. Like they know like what they're good at doing, like, you know, what they're capable of doing, like, you know, what they're good at. It's like, and especially their coach knows what to do. He's a really good, good coach. I can tell the way, like by seeing the way they play. And, and I think they added some kits on the team. Uh, they got the goalie from ProTech, and I think they got the D from – I forgot the team, but I think they got the new new uh, defenseman. Uh, it's just – I just don't like playing against them, honestly. Like, it's hard to play against them, and it's always fun, honestly. Like, it's it's never easy in this league, like, to play against it. Like, it's it's always hard, but, like, Apricor is, like, I guess my worst team 
but I want to point like it just. I I I think it brings up a good point that there's no such thing as an yeah. easy game in this league. Yeah, it's it's always hard, and but especially like you know, Abacor is a team that we should you know watch, uh, the second half of the season for sure. And, and moving on about the second half, or going further, you know, there's the team goal of going to Providence. Last season, you guys are robbed of that when everything had shut down in March. So now you have another chance. You know, the team is just as good as it's ever really been. And from a team standpoint, you know, what do you think is the motivation to uh, continue what you guys had in the first half to really dominate the league? I mean, I think that uh, we, we can be good enough to win the championship. Like, we have many players that are good and, and, you know, by just looking at the record that we had this first, first uh, half of the season, like we are 18 and one and two. Uh, I think we have a good chance to win the championship, but I don't think we're good enough yet to get there. Like, obviously our record is really good, but uh, you know, when we, I don't know, like those North teams like BJR, uh, the Avs, they're really good, like, and we have to be more constant, uh, consistent, I guess, like, we have to be ready for every game, and, uh, you know, every shift, like, every game, like, we have to be good, like, every game, and that's the, I mean, that's the part we're missing, I guess, like, we have some up and downs, and, like, we're always not consistent, Uh, so, yeah, that's the, we can be so good, like, and, I have no doubt about it, but like, and I, I want to win the championship with this team. So, you know, we just need to get better to beat the North teams. Yeah. And also from a personal standpoint, Kay, you're looking at colleges and yep. trying to get that NCAA commitment. So yep. uh, what, what's your mindset on that as you're reaching that goal? Uh, I mean, my, my individually, like my goal is to play, and NESCAC schools next year and uh I mean in order to do that like you know I gotta work even harder like every practice and games and you know I'm not too focused on I mean obviously I want to go NESCAC school but like I'm not too focused on that like I just need to focus on what's in front of me right now like you know like play my game and show the coaches that I'm ready make my next step and hopefully I'll come eventually yeah but yeah okay I think the way that you're playing right now that shouldn't really be a problem thank you but I want to thank you again for joining us this is Kay Suda leading scorer for both the 87s and the entire Eastern Hockey League okay again thank you for joining this edition of Inside the 87s no thank you